So hello fellow coin collectors and welcome back to Goomadi's Coins and Banknotes and today we are reviewing the 1954 Australian Halfpenny Coin. So this is a 25.5mm in diameter so it's going across there, there at the widest point. It weighs 5.67 grams. It's a bronze coin and the actual elements in it are 75% copper. 2.5% zinc and 1.5% tin. So they're three elements you can find on the periodic table. And this is the second year in which Queen Elizabeth II had uh, these coins minted. The first year was 1953. Okay, so these are all Perth mint coins. So they should have a dot after the actual Y in penny. Uh... If they don't have a dot, then it's an error coin. Okay, the mintage for these ones is 21,962,000. So this is a very common coin. You should be able to get these in extremely fine to almost uncirculated grade in any coin lots that you buy. So if you buy like a kilo of half penny coins or halfpenny coins, someone told me off not calling it halfpenny, um, you will usually find a few good examples so uh, for me uh, the only ones worth keeping will be pretty much almost uncirculated who uncirculated okay so a lot of people just come here for the coin values so if you want it in very fine condition or lower you'll be paying probably very fine probably a dollar uh, this coin here yeah that's probably very fine to find. Oh, the class of the borderline. This one is scrap. So this is not really worth even a dollar. So whatever scrap metal is. So these are the ones you want to avoid. Uh, and then we have this one. has a lot of scratches. Yeah, our class is very fine. So about a dollar for those coins. If you want it in if condition... So with a lot less damage, you'll be paying about three bucks. And the uncirculated coin, about 20. So not really an expensive coin because so many of them were minted. Okay, so this coin has a obverse of six, or one of the design six, in which it has 112 denticles going around. If you go to Gratia, the I and the A should point in between denticles. So, what we are looking at there is that you go to I, go straight up, it's in between identical, same with the A. And if it isn't, then it's probably a mule from a previous year. Uh, probably obverse 5, which was last issued in 1952. And you notice that one, you can go to fit I. Okay, we, this with the second, you go to your Regina, but you don't have fit eye on this one, so you can't actually use it, because that is a King George VI, and we have the reverse, which has the kangaroo, and that is reverse B, which was used from 1939 to 62. There's 106 denticles. Uh, H in half aligns with the denticles. So you go H. And you look it up. And it aligns with a fin denticle. So you've got thick and thin. So the H aligns with fin. If it doesn't, then it will be a design variation. Because as you can see, this one has a date on it. So it can't be a mule from another year. It would have to be a variation in the design. And I'm not too... Okay, so along with die cracks, cuds, and we have doubling on this coin, especially on the obverse. Uh, the only other type of error, which is probably unique to this coin, is a four leaning towards the right. So we've got the left this way and the right, so it should be leaning that way. 
So I've never actually seen one of those. So what you need to do is you need to just compare it with uh, some a few coins that you got. So to me, all those fours look pretty much the same. Just remember you can have die fields on the actual dates as well. Which don't seem to be too scarce. And so you're looking for a leaning four, which I don't see. I just see slight engraving differences in the actual fours, but nothing very special. Okay, and this four seems to be quite weak, so I don't have any leaning fours. Ah, so we just check each of these coins for die cracks doubling so this one seems to have a bit of a weakness in the inscription but it seems to be a little bit worn so i'm not really surprised about that okay let's get the light over here uh also check to see if uh this is a type six because later on they did use a type seven for the obverse uh but i'm not too sure so no, that should have uh, 110 denticles so fd restored to legend so obviously this should have no fd but you never know they probably would have made i don't know they could have made one or two uh yeah what they call them yeah just uh trial pieces but we never know unless you actually Get some information from the Royal Australian Mint. Okay, and also you're looking for rotations. So, nothing in that. How about this one? Yeah, slightly well circulated. Probably look for a pouch. So they usually have a pouch there. That would be uh, probably a type of die feel. And we haven't seen anything on that one. Let's see if we're gonna. Oh, there you go. That's even better. So this uh, camera's been dying for quite a while, and I just haven't gotten around to actually buy a new one. Actually, it's a pain in the ass getting new cameras because you have to change. Oh, you just have to sign into everything again. Okay, so. This coin here is probably almost uncirculated. This is the one you want to keep. It does have a lot of mint last year. I don't see that much circulation. And I base it on the actual reef on the head. I can see a lot of detail on that. So this is one that you would keep for, or I would keep for uh, coin collecting. And uh, this one is the one that's going into my coin album. You can see there's some weaknesses in the lettering. Seems to be a bit common uh, up north and south as well as the dates. There will be partial die fills. And do we have any... See, this one has lamination flaws developing. This will only get worse as the coin ages because uh, obviously these metals don't like to be in mint state. They like to be in a type of molecule which is actually not a metal so it would change into something else copper sulfate copper oxide stuff like that and here we have a it appearing on this side so it looks like it goes straight through the coin so that for long term it's not going to bode well it's just going to that's going to be a weakness in which uh all the elements actually attack the coin so i don't see anything on that oh do they all dot after penny? Not too sure. Uh, that one I didn't check. But as you can see, it got quite a few. So these ones here are probably not really worth much. You can see that the rims, yeah, they had problems with the actual rims. But it gives it character. I don't know. This one I just like just because of the rim. If we had, you know, like the 1951 UK penny, I don't really like that one. Because the rims look too perfect. These ones, the rims look nice. And this one has a little bit of ghosting. So maybe I'll keep that one as well. OK, 
Okay, so that's basically what you'll be looking for in your half pennies from 1952. I hope this helps you with your coin collecting. Uh, I know the video quality is a little bit crap, but anyway, thank you and goodbye.